everyone, my name is Fernanda and today I'm going to be showing you guys my beauty secrets to achieving glowy skin and a perfect everyday makeup look. So in today's video, I'm going to pretend like I'm on Vogue, I am a huge celebrity, I'm super excited for today's video and I haven't done a makeup routine in a really long time so I'm excited for you guys to see all the products that I've been loving. This currently isn't the best day for me to show my non-makeup face as I currently have eczema spots on my eyelid and my cheek and my bags are extra bad considering that I've been sleeping quite late the past few days but as my problem areas are mainly uneven skin tone, this makeup look is perfect for concealing dark spots and accentuating the features that you already have. What I like to use is just any sort of cleanser that is hydrating and cream to foam. This is just the CeraVe one that I currently am using. Going on as my next step, I'm going to use the CeraVe Skin Renewing Cream Serum. For me personally, if my skin is dry and I'm getting eczema breakouts, it's really hard for me to apply makeup and feel the most confident that I can when my base is not as I would like it to be. I also use some of this under my eyes. And then as for moisturizers, I always go for a very creamy moisturizer. The one that I've recently been using and it's almost finished is the Daily Greens by Pharmacy. It also smells super minty, love that. One of the things that I've been really into recently are using face tools like these ones. This is a rose quartz gua sha, and I also have a face roller from Herbivore. The oil that I'm going to be using today is from The Ordinary. It is the 100% organic cold pressed rose hip seed oil. I think this is better to use at night, but you can still use it in the daytime. I just apply a little bit of this onto my finger and apply it all over my face. I've made videos talking about how to use this gua sha, but just to sum it up in how I've been using it, I start off by going all down, and basically this is really good for you to drain your lymph lymphatic nodes and I believe to depuff your face. It also can help like sculpt your face, especially if you do your jawline. For my neck, I just go down first and then I go up and I basically do each section like five to eight times. When you're doing this, you just have to be very gentle because I do know one of my friends did it and ended up giving herself like a hickey from dragging it too hard. So you do need to be very gentle. It's also very important to have an oil on your face. Otherwise, it will just pull on your skin and not glide the way it's supposed to. I also want to say that the gua sha does originate from Chinese medical traditions. So I think it's really cool that especially on platforms such as like TikTok or even through YouTube videos that a lot of people are getting more into it and learning about the traditions from China and Southeast Asia. I also like to go along my face like this to smoothen out these smile lines and the lines that I have under my eyes. When I'm done with that, I just kind of like rolling my face with this jade roller. It's honestly so cold and feels so good. And I feel like it really depuffs my eyes in the morning, especially if I use this smaller end. Then finally, when I'm done with that, I'm going to finish off the skincare with sunscreen, of course. I feel like I just started getting into sunscreen like this past year and I regret not doing it earlier because I feel like a lot of dark spots on my face could have maybe been prevented if I had worn skincare earlier and protected my skin. And of course, we just want to prevent any fine lines from happening in the near future or when I get older. So so this is the one by Supergoop. It is the Unseen Sunscreen SPF 40. And I got a fair amount of this because I did read online that a lot of people actually underestimate how much sunscreen you need on your face and that it just doesn't end up doing what it's supposed to be doing. So I just grab all of this and then apply it all on my face. This sunscreen actually has really good texture. It's not very greasy or oily and I feel like it just locks in all my skincare. And then of course, make sure you go down to your neck. I am a victim of having wrinkles here and I think it's from looking down too much. I am not too sure, but I definitely do not want to keep those going. I'm just going to apply some of this lip balm. This is by Summer Fridays and it is the Lip Butter Balm. I highly recommend this. I feel like I've had this for so long and there is hardly a dent in it. It is super moisturizing and especially for before going to bed, it makes my lips so moisturized when I wake up. So now that's all done, we can begin with our makeup. I have my little makeup pouch here with everything that I want to show you guys and all my favorite products. For me, I don't really like a super heavy face of makeup. I feel like sometimes less is more. The product that I've been using for so long now, it's kind of my holy grail. I would say. It is the It Cosmetics CC Color Correcting Full Coverage Cream with SPF 50. I apply some to the back of my hand like this and then I normally start out in sections because one thing that I've noticed with applying face products is if you do the dot kind of thing all over your face and then you don't blend fast enough, sometimes it dries up and then it's kind of hard to disperse that product. I started wearing makeup when I was probably in grade 6. I was so embarrassed when I first started wearing it. I remember people would always ask me, are you wearing mascara? And I would of course use that classic lie, which I feel like 
like a lot of people used to say when they were younger that was like, I was just playing with makeup or I had it on from last night and I couldn't get it off. But the truth was, it was me putting it on every morning. I would run into my mom's bathroom and like put a tiny bit of mascara and like eyebrow gel and call it a day. But I definitely think as the years have gone by, I've gotten a lot better. Even when I look at my makeup last year, I feel like my eyebrows were way too thick and I feel like there's always something wrong with it when you look at it like the following year. So far, I haven't had any problems with this makeup routine. So hopefully it sticks for a while. Moving on, I'm going to start to use my concealer. This is the NARS Creamy Radiant Concealer. I use quite a bit and I go all under my under eyes. I'm looking super pale right now because my face makeup is just making one layer on my skin and there's no dimension. I do use some powder. This is just the Laura Mercier and I go under my eyes just to avoid any creasing with my concealer. Moving on, one of the favorite products that I've been using recently is this MAC Studio Fix Powder. It is actually a face powder, but it works really well as bronzer, so I just got a darker shade than the one that I have. It looks like this. It is in the shade NW40, and then I grab a big fluffy brush, and I just bronze my whole face from my cheek and my forehead and my chin. So then I'll look something like this. It looks a little bit better, but I think I'm gonna add a little bit more in a little bit. So I discovered these products from watching the Madison Beer makeup tutorial. These are the Charlotte Tilbury Glow Sticks, I believe. I'm starting off with the Peach Gasm. This is the blush that I use. It's a cream. I'll just do a few dots and then blend it in after. And then I'm just gonna blend this out with my Beauty Blender. And then I'm just gonna take a different fluffy brush and I'm gonna apply a powder blush. If you've watched any of these makeup tutorials, a lot of them say that like the placement of your blush really makes a difference on your face. And if you apply it just right on the apples of your cheek, it does a different illusion than when it's on your cheekbones because it kind of makes you look lifted and like, you know, just up. So I focus most of my blush on there, but I'll also do a little bit on my nose and just a little bit on my cheek just to like still have color there. Um, and a little bit on my forehead and just a little bit on my face just with whatever is extra on the brush. I know a lot of people do soap brows, but personally my eyebrows aren't even long enough to like flick up without looking insane. I normally use either hairspray or a gel and I know that sounds kind of weird, but hairspray actually works really well if you just spray it on a spoolie like one of these or I really like using this. This is actually a new hack that I've discovered. This is the Got To Be Glued Water Resistant Sprinkling Glue. Now this glue is actually really good. It works so well and you can really like lick your eyebrows in the exact direction that you want it to go which I feel like sometimes my hairs don't want to listen to me when I'm brushing them so having something like this that really sets them down is really good. I'm only going to apply a little bit. This is the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade. You just need to be very careful with how much you apply on your angled brush because a little will go a long way and if there's too much it's really easy to accidentally just draw on your eyebrows and it to look super blocky so normally what I'll do is have some like tissue paper or something and then grab a little bit of the pomade and then just like brush it all basically off and then only use the remainder that's on this what I used to do back when I was in high school was focus so much about sculpting my eyebrow and making it look super defined but I feel like now once again less is more and I feel like the new I guess like makeup trend that everyone's doing is just like a lighter look so when doing that you just need to do really light strokes and then in the end it looks really good another tip that I really like to do when I fill in my eyebrows is just do a little bit then brush it do a little bit then brush it and I feel like brushing it really disperses is that the word like the product and it's a lot easier to see like what you actually look like than just going hard and then realizing that you can't go back Another tip that I use when I fill in my eyebrows is to be lighter on the front. I also use my brush to line up like with my nose where the beginning of my eyebrow starts because sometimes I wouldn't go all the way in or sometimes I'd go too far over and realize that's way too far. But I feel like like that you can tell exactly how far you're supposed to. And then I'm going to go back in with my MAC powder and something that I've been doing for a long time that I remember I learned from Summer McKean in literally like 2016 is to use bronzer as eyeshadow. So I'll usually grab a big fluffy brush like this, grab some of those powders kind of fluff it up and then just do like my whole eyelid basically I think this is super easy to just already kind of see a difference have some definition on most days I'll just leave it like this because there is no need to do anything more but if I'm feeling like I want a little bit more I'll grab a more precise eyeshadow brush and then actually go in my crease and fix it a little bit more I also try to focus my eyeshadow going like this so that there's a little bit of a shadow effect and it looks a little bit more fox side or just like lifted. I'm moving on to my favorite step, which is lining my eyes with an eyeshadow. Now, this color doesn't really matter. Normally, I'll go for like a dark brown or like a reddish color. If you have blue eyes, definitely try this. I think I'm gonna go for this middle color. Normally, I'll just line the tops of my eye and do a little wing. And by wing, I just go off of my lower lash line and just bring it up. You just follow the natural shape of your eye. And then to kind of balance it on the bottom, I'll use a little bit of this again and go on my waterline. 
then I'll go in with my eyelash curler. Now this one is just from Revlon. I did just get eyelash extensions not too long ago. So my lashes are looking very short. They're not as long as they normally are. And they're definitely a lot weaker. So I'm very careful when curling my eyelashes. As for mascara, the two that are my favorite, I use these all the time, are the Luminous Lash Paradise and the Lash Sensational Full Fan Effect. And both of these are in waterproof. I know people say that waterproof isn't that great for your eyes and that it's really bad for your lashes like when you're trying to take it off at night. But honestly, I haven't had any problems. I've been using waterproof since literally I was like in grade six and I actually think my lashes have been holding up pretty well and I definitely think that it looks so much better like normally when I use non-waterproof mascara it comes off so easily and then I have it under my eyes and it's just a mess and I would rather deal with this. I'm gonna start off with the Voluminous Lash Paradise one. So there's my first coat of mascara. I was just thinking actually that the first YouTuber that I ever watched when I was like 10 years old was actually Makeup by Mandy. I'm sure a lot of you guys know who she is. I literally remember searching up before the first day of grade six, makeup for grade six, first day of school makeup. And I would just wash those religiously. I have to be super careful to not get any on my eyelid because I do that all the time. And of course you can go in with a Q-tip, but it just ruins my mood. I would just rather not do that. I personally really like going from the root because I feel like my eyelashes look better when they are thicker and more voluminous. And then when I'm done my mascara, I'll keep my eyes looking neutral and then I'll just go like this just so I can get the very tips of my eyelashes. I'm obsessed with lips. I used to always do like a full face of makeup and just nothing on my lips. I would literally wear chapstick and call it a day, which is fine. But I've honestly discovered that having lip products makes your face when you have a full face look a lot more balanced and completes the look. My recent combo, which is so basic, and this is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Top lipstick and lip liner. I feel like I've heard so many people talk about this, but honestly, it is worth the hype. And then to top it off, I'll use this lip gloss. This is the Lifter Gloss by Maybelline in the shade Silk. Okay, perfect. And the last thing I'm gonna use is the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Wand Highlighter in the color Spotlight. Now, a little bit of this goes a very long way, so I'm only gonna use a tad and grab a tiny brush like this. And that's the makeup look. I'm just gonna take this out. This is the final look. I am obsessed with how it turned out. I really like that it's full coverage, yet it's still super glowy and it looks super good in photos. Everything's non-flashback or whatever. You won't be looking like Flashback Mary. I hoped you guys learned something new about my makeup routine or some product recommendations. All the links to the products will be in the description box below so we can have matching makeup routines. I hope to see you guys very shortly. Make sure to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and I love you guys.